Hello, my name is Jonathan Daly. I'm a co-founder of Decel Games and also the programmer for the, the studio. Uh, and I'm going to be talking today about Bark Quest, which is the uh, Global Game Jam game that uh, myself and my other co-founder, Carrie Daly, worked on. Uh, we made this game in about 48 hours for Global Game Jam 2018. Um, so a few things about it first. Um, the primary thing that you do in this game is you are a dog and you run around and talk to uh, NPCs and sometimes they just uh, you know give you dialogue that you can read. So we have a dialogue system in the game. Um, but we also have a quest system. Um, so I want to talk about the quest and dialogue systems today as well as the um, interaction system that I implemented to make this game work. Um, so I did the programming for the game. Um, all the art is from the Unreal Marketplace um, and from some other projects that we've done in the past. Um, all the design and level layout was done by Carrie. So if you have any questions for her, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments and I'll make sure she gets them so she can answer them for you. Uh, if you have any questions about the programming, uh, you can leave a comment for me as well in the same video and I'll get back to you uh, when I can. So yeah, we made this game, uh, but uh, at first it has an interaction system, so let me kind of display how uh, that works in practice. So I can run up to this person, you see that they have the, the letter E over their shoulder, let me, letting me know that I can talk to them. So I hit the E key on the keyboard and I get this display of dialogue text. So um, uh, we'll just do this, I'm not going to read the whole thing, you can, you can read it while I'm talking. So basically they're asking us for their skateboard. They don't know where their skateboard is. They can't find it. Now if I keep talking to them, they're going to say different things. So here's a, a second piece of text that they said. Um, and you can see it's the same second piece of text. Um, so we kind of went with the um, RPG trope of if you talk to an NPC and they keep saying the same thing over and over again, they don't have anything else to tell you. Uh, so they've lost their skateboard. They don't know where it is. Um, so let's go see if we can find it for them. Um, so I'm going to kind of spoil this quest for you, but the uh, skateboard is down the sidewalk here. Um, so we can see we could walk up and talk to an NPC, an NPC. Now I can walk up and talk to, well not talk to, but interact with this item. Uh, so I can hit the E key again and the item disappears and I've picked it up. And now I can walk uh, a run back to the skateboarder and give them their skateboard back. And the skateboard then shows up at their feet and they give me another a bit of text thanking me for finding their skateboard. So this is the the systems that we did for this for this game. So there's really three primary systems. It was uh, the interaction system, being able to walk up and interact with an NPC or an item. Uh, then there was also the quest system of knowing um, what items I had to interact with to be able to um, complete a quest for an NPC. And also the qu the uh, dialogue system, which is uh, pretty integrated with the quest system as well to know okay what piece of dialogue should I be displaying at what time uh, how do I get that to display on on screen uh, so I'm going to kind of walk through these really quick um, for this um, game to kind of show you how that's how some of that stuff works um, so uh, I'm also going to do this in the order that I actually implemented it over the weekend doing uh, this game so the first thing I did was the um, the actually the interaction system. So there are a couple constraints for this. I need to be able to interact with, or a couple of requirements, I should say, um, a couple of requirements that I need to be able to interact with both NPCs and items, which were going to be different classes. Or, uh, so I needed to be able to um, have this be robust enough that I could have any subclass of NPC or item be able to be interactable. Um, and uh, also the constraint of I, I can't I don't want to interact with any random tree or building or anything it had to be particular things that I knew that I wanted to be able to interact with uh, so uh, one thing that I do want to mention is this entire game was created using blueprint so it's visual scripting system in Unreal Engine 4 uh, there's no C++ code in this project at all and the main reason we did that um, was I didn't want to have to spend the time um, compiling code over the weekend, so I wanted to do something very lightweight and, and uh, easy to work with. Um, but Blueprint is also super robust, so you're able to do things like subclass uh, uh, item, uh, not just items, but sub do subclassing. So I can have different item classes, I can have different NPC classes, 
um, and also uh, lets you um, uh, do things like interfaces. Um, so I make pretty heavy use of interfacing uh, pretty regularly. Um, so an interface, if you don't know, is a way to basically guarantee that certain objects implement certain functions. So uh, let's talk about the interaction model first and how that at works. Uh, so here's our dog, up close and personal. Um, so our character has this uh, interaction, what I call an interaction sphere, is what I called it. Um, but this is a sphere component that, that goes around the um, character. So you can have different events happen um, based on different things that can happen to the sphere, like when things overlap it, or things hit it, or if you click it, or, or on any number of different things. So we implemented when you begin and end overlapping another actor. Uh, when that overlaps this component. So basically what this means is if I walk up to an item or walk up to an NPC, as soon as they overlap this sphere, then this event kicks off. And what I'm allowed to then do from there is go check a whole bunch of information about what it is I just overlapped. And the first thing I check is whether or not it implements an interactable interface. So this is an a interface that I created that has a single function in it. Um, we'll take a look at this. And the single function in this interface in this interface is interact. So as long as whatever I just ran into with this sphere uh, or, or started overlapping this sphere, whatever overlapped it, as long as it's interactable with this interface, then I know I can send it an interact message. And that means I can do that for items, I can do it for NPCs, whatever I need to. So that so how I uh, know how to do this is. Um, uh, I need to be able to not only know if something's interactable, but I also don't want to uh, send this interact message to more than one thing at once. And I want to also um, know whether or not I should send the interact message, because um, there's times that I don't. Uh, in the mobile version, for example, I'm making a mobile version of this for um, iOS and Android. Um, on there, you don't have a keyboard, so you're we're tapping the screen. But tapping the screen is also jumping, so I need to be able to know, well, should I be sending the jump command, or am I close enough to an item or a person that I need to interact with them and I should be sending the interact command. Um, so in the PC version uh, and the, the Mac version, jump and, and interact are different buttons, but on mobile, they're the same button. Uh, so in both cases, what I am doing is, if I go to interact with something and I can interact with it, I check if I already have an interactable cache, so if I already have something cached, um, then I uh, basically ignore the fact that something's cached, um, except for in a very uh, specific instance at the end of the game, I check if I'm interacting with a particular class, and uh, because there's a, there's a scripted event at the end of the game that's a little different than, um, it's kind of coded separately from the rest of the systems. Um, but yeah, so if I uh, don't have anything, uh, already in, it's, meaning it's not valid, because prop, uh, properties in or variables inside of Blueprint can have an invalid state uh, if they're objects. So in this case, this actor object, I'm like, do I have a reference to an actor? Is it valid? Uh, and if it's not valid, that means I can interact with something. Uh, so I save a, a cached uh, variable there. Uh, so that cache lets me then when I go to interact with something, which is the, the interact with input, so which is mapped to the E key, I can check for validity of this object, and then I can tell it to be interacted with. So that's how the interaction system works. So it's basically going around, and whenever I get close enough to something to interact with it, I cache a reference to it, and then if the player decides to hit the interact button, I will send it the interact message. So let's talk about uh, NPCs next. Because uh, yeah, you know, I go up to talk to say the skateboarder. Now the skateboarder is actually its own subclass. Um, so it is the skater subclass, and it only has one function inside of it: um, complete quest. Then I actually call the parent implementation of complete quest um, because this is a subclass of the base NPC class. And what this does is when I interact with this um, person to complete their quest. I actually turn on visibility of their skateboard. So this person already has the item, technically. This NPC has the item that I'm going to go find. And they have the skateboard. So it's hidden right now. If I can unhide it for a moment. So they already have a skateboard here. It's just hidden at first. So when you first go to talk to them, you can't see the skateboard because I've hidden it. Uh, and the reason for that is 
when you go to complete the quest, I just unhide the, the skateboard. Now, this, though, is actually not all the code that makes up the NPCs, because this is a subclass of the base NPC class. And the base NPC class is what handles everything with the quest system and the dialogue system. Uh, so let's talk about the, the quest system first, and then I'll go into the dialogue system. So let's actually go to the base um, NPC class. All right, so this is the interact. This interact function here is what primarily drives the quest system. There's a couple of variables that are really important. Go find those. So there's two variables here for part that are part of the quest system. So there is a array of quest task items. So these are um, items that are associated with the quest for this NPC. So if this array is empty, then the NPC doesn't have any quests. For example, there's a waitress near the start of the game at this little cafe, and she doesn't have any quest items, so she doesn't have any quests. But you can still talk to her, because um, the dialogue system uh, uh, handles uh, dialogue for NPCs that don't have quests. Um, but when you go to place an NPC in the game, you uh, give them quest items and uh, that's how the quest system works so it's it's decentralized in that there's not some central point that you're setting up all of these um, quests for the NPCs um, if you actually look at our skater character here um, they have a single item in this quest task items array which is their skateboard so if I actually go click on it it's over here so the skateboard is actually linked to the character so what that um, so that's uh, setting up a quest for them so when you set up a quest for your character let me fly back over here to our skater so when you set up this item that is telling the quest system that this is the item that needs to be interacted with before the quest is complete and also everything in this array has to be interacted with before the quest is complete so going through um, you know, thinking from a player perspective, when we go to interact with this character, the first time we interact with an NPC, um, or I should say, whenever we interact with an NPC, we check for their the quest, the state of their quest. Um, so there's actually a variable, um, or probably there's not a, a variable for that. We calculate every time that you um, talk to them what their current quest state is. So uh, we have this function that looks at it this way. First, we check if we have a quest um, at all. So that's checking for the uh, length of this quest items array. So if there's nothing in the quest task items array, then there's no quest. So we uh, can report back that we don't have a quest. Um, but we could have a quest. If we do have a quest, um, which is here, if we've never been talked to before, then we're in what I've called the never talk to quest state. So this is like the first time you would ever talk to an NPC, you've never talked to them before. Uh, and then after talking to them though, we flip this flag to true that they've been talked to. And I'll show where that happens in a moment. And then we also check for quest completion. Um, so how we check if a quest is complete is if everything that is in this quest task items array has uh, their complete flag flipped to true. So remember in the quest after we talked to the skater uh, we went down and, and interacted with the skateboard. Well, When we interact with the skateboard um, then the skateboard will flip its own flag so we actually can look at the skateboard really quick. So the uh, skateboard is right here. There's a BP item quest skateboard. So this is its own item subclass, and um, uh, has the uh, a complete task function in it. But it is a child class of the item quest. So a, an item quest class. Um, this has code in it that whenever the um, item is interacted with, we check if the task has been complete. If it hasn't then um, we ask for the quest state from the quest giver which is who is um, who this item is linked to and if the quest is in progress uh, then we can say that the task is complete so the reason we check if the task is in progress or the quest is in progress 
is we don't want players running around and trying to interact with a bunch of items and thinking that the item com task is complete before you've actually started the quest. Um, so once the know the quest is, is in progress and we've marked this as complete, then we actually go to uh, say, well, we need to complete the task now for this particular item because the uh, player has interacted with the item while the item's quest giver is in an in-progress uh, quest state. Uh, so the nice thing about doing the subclassing in Blueprint is this complete quest function, uh, we can actually subclass. So if you actually look at it, it's empty in this parent class. Um, and that's because outside of the parent class, uh, in this skateboard, I override this function. So it's now doing something different. So this complete task uh, event is now changing the visibility and the collision for the skateboard, making it invisible to look like we picked up the skateboard. Um, so now that we've actually told, we've picked up the skateboard and we've set that it's been interacted with during the quest givers in progress quest state then we know that okay this is complete now if we go talk to the skateboarder again like after we've picked up the um, if we go talk to the skateboarder again after we picked up the skateboard then we can check if the quest is complete and uh, quest completion is actually not based on some central system but based on whether or not all the items in the quest task items array have been interacted with are they complete or not so in this case there's just the skateboard for the skater so you can talk to the skate the skater to start the quest go down interact with the item to pick it up which again I just turn off the visibility you run back to the skateboard and talk to them again the skateboarder then checks okay what's my current quest state right um, if I've been talked to I'm in progress on my quest let me go and check if my quest is complete and it checks that again by asking all the items that are associated with it for the quest if the task is complete for that item if it is then it can report back that yes I actually have completed the quest and at that point um, this function then returns back that the quest is complete so that's a lot to go through so if you need to run through that again uh, a few times uh, you know you can definitely do that but essentially it's kind of making sure of what state we're at the what state of the quest we're in for this NPC based upon not any central system but basically calculating it every time that you ask so every time you go talk to an NPC we make sure okay do they have a quest or not if they do have a quest have they been talked to or not if they have been talked to is the quest complete or not if it's not complete then there's still more to do but if it is complete then I can say okay we've completed the quest so I built it out this way because then I didn't have to worry about having some centralized system to enter in all of the quests. Like to basically make a new quest, all it requires is a new NPC subclass, new item quest subclasses, you place them all in the world, and then you link them together through this array. So very, very, very simple. And because it's all decentralized like that, every NPC is responsible for their own quest. Um, then I don't have to worry about having some central system that we have to enter everything into. Now that works for questing, but the dialogue system is a little different because we do want the dialogue centrally located at one place so I can go and grab the dialogue. And the main reason for having the dialogue centralized um, as opposed to the quests, the quests we can kind of add, remove, tweak on the fly because we're actually working with the objects. Like if we wanted to maybe this skater not only dropped their skateboard maybe they dropped a drink or they dropped their hat or something if we wanted to add a hat to this um, quest line it literally as simple as saying plus let me add an item um, let me go you know I can literally just add an item and then I can just pick from a bunch of different items that are already in in the level um, so it's not something very difficult to do but the dialogue we actually went through several iterations of the dialogue throughout the game so we don't want to have to jump in and, and modify the dialogue on each individual character um, also a thing to think about we didn't have time to on, on this game but if you're going to translate your dialogue into more languages you don't want to have to go and make those modifications at the level of okay this NPC's dialogue is this that and the other you know you don't want to have to kind of go through and do that so what we use to do the dialogue system 
was uh, what's called data tables. So a data table is in Unreal Engine 4. Let me go find it in my data folder here. So in the data folder here, we have some enumerations, um, but these are the really important things. So we have a struct, which is a data structure, um, called uh, quest dialog, and then we also have a quest dialog data table. Now this data table, uh, in Unreal Engine 4, a data table allows you to take um, data from a CSV file, it's comma separated values, so basically an Excel spreadsheet. Um, can export to a CSV. You can take the data from the CSV and map that data to a struct. So what this lets us do, I'll open this up. Uh, now you'll see that the bottom half of this is blanked out and blurred because I don't want to spoil the ending of the game. So this is the dialogue. Um, so basically we have these structs uh, that each row of this table maps to a single data structure. So if we actually go back and look at our data structure, you can see that we have uh, a speaker value, our no quest dialog, never talk to dialog, three quests in progress dialogs, quest complete and post quest complete. So these are all the stages of dialog that will be displayed on screen by an NPC, all dependent upon what stage their quest is in. And so if they don't have a quest, then they'll just have the no quest dialog. But if they have a quest, they have a single never talk to, so this is the first thing they say when you talk to them. Then they have three in progress dialogues. So you saw earlier as we were talking to the uh, skater character, they kept saying different things um, and then started repeating themselves. So we have a program that um, diff we have three different dialogue options that we can have that play in order when you're talking to an NPC if their quest is in progress. Um, so we use this to like give more hints or give more background to the story, um, but we do have it repeat to go along with the trope of repeating dialogue from an NPC means you uh, don't have any more to read. Um, one interesting thing to note is I actually programmed the, the dialogue system to have both a quest complete and a post quest complete dialogue, meaning when you go to turn in the quest for an NPC they could say one thing, but they could say something different if you talk to them after turning in the quest. Um, Carrie wrote all the dialogue, which was hilarious for the game, but I failed to let her know that we had post-quest dialogue, so she didn't write any, and we didn't have time to go back and write any more, so we ended up having um, the data just repeat itself at the end. So there is quest complete and post-quest complete dialogue playing as far as the dialogue system is concerned, but it happens to be the same dialogue because uh, we didn't write the dialogue because I never you know told her uh, that we had that feature um, but it's in the system um, so that's how the dialogue is centrally located like that so what that lets us do is in our NPCs uh, the base class when we go to um, actually handle the different quest states we display particular dialogue based upon uh, um, what's in the dialogue um, database. So we pull the data out when the game starts into this uh, variable, this dialog variable, and then when we're handling the, uh, for example, the no quest dialog, we display the no quest, um, uh, the dialog no quest. So what that um, lets us do is uh, basically pull that particular piece of, of text out and display the dialog uh, in the UI. Um, that also lets us do it for when they've never been talked to or any of the other states. Um, so uh, now the other thing with this that I've done that is both part of the kind of part of the quest system, but also part of um, the can be part of the, the um, basically part of the NPCs um, is that we have these functions here, which I kind of wanted to highlight. Um, so it's no, you know, there's a no quest, quest in progress, complete quest, post complete quest. So these are functions that get called when we're handling being interacted with. So whenever I interact with it, whenever the player interacts with an NPC, depending on their quest state, we will call these functions. Now, if I actually look at, say, the no quest function, it's empty. It's empty in the base class, but I can override these in the subclasses. So this is how we do things like. When I go and talk to the, when we talk to the skater uh, to complete the quest and their skateboard showed up, 
Well, what, uh, how that works is in the skater uh, subclass, I override the complete quest function. So what happens is when the uh, quest completion is being handled, when you're interacting with the character, um, I've overridden to have special functionality for completing the quest for this particular skater subclass. So what this lets me do is anything in the game, I can have different things happen when you're talking to them at different stages. So uh, again, we kind of ran out of time to do things, but you could do things like, uh, for example, let's say when you talk to them and they're displaying in quest progress, um, in progress quest rather dialogue we could play a specific animation or play a sound or do something else while um, the uh, interaction is happening and we can make that unique to every subclass um, in the game for every NPC um, so there's you know some more stuff I could go over um, but again I don't want to spoil the ending of the game and I also don't want to um, uh, this video to go much longer than, than 30 minutes total uh, so if you have any questions, please post them down. I'll give you a view of the town. Um, so if you have any questions, please just post them in the comments. Um, and you can ask them about the programming or the game design or, or level layout or anything like that. Um, as one other final quick tidbit I want to mention, um, we all of these roads are actually road builder blueprints um, that, I, uh, that I created. Um, it's all instance-based. Um, so that every single road builder is a single draw call because it's all instant static meshes. Um, so uh, you just want to kind of point that out. So like here's a road, um, and uh, I can actually take and modify. Let's see this setup here, um, the length. Uh, so I can modify the the setup here with the road segments and uh, change how many so like this has 34 but now I can go down and say well I only want 10 and it will automatically change uh, for us and that way we don't have to uh, we don't have to hand lay all of these pieces but we also don't have to worry about a whole bunch of draw calls for all of these uh, individual road pieces so again thanks for watching uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, and uh, if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we post uh, trailers and other videos about the games we're working on here. Um, you also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. There'll be links in the description for the video. Thanks.